I'm in a genuinely fascinating and ought to be terrifying situation. It ought to be terrifying, but as I've mentioned in the past, I I'm missing something in the brain that tells me to be afraid of things that I should be afraid of. But here I am, very literally, trying to do what the last guy who tried to do this got himself put up on a cross. The words were put in my mouth, as I said in the previous video. Dor Ike Shupsaltol. A stubbornly perverted, again, not in the sexual sense, perverted in the sense of crooked. A stubbornly, but crooked has a different connotation in English too. So I'll stick with the traditional word that's in all the old Bibles. A stubbornly perverted and twisted generation. I didn't know in the last video why that was meant to be applicable when I said it. But it seems now that I might. Whew, okay. So first of all, let me tell you that you need to make a distinction between me as the person who is telling you what he's telling you, which you can judge for yourself, and me just the dude, me just the guy. The ancients were not wrong when they had a distinction between the body and the soul. You know, we can acknowledge each other's unique souls, but our bodies are all kind of the same. Similarly with the Jews writ large. I'm speaking now specifically to, to Christians. The Jews definitely, from the Christian perspective and from a lot of the world's perspective, the Jews definitely have a... They're different in some way, in some spiritual way. You don't want to use the individuals. You know what we mean by spiritual, right? We can use it in the poetic sense. But they're different in some spiritual way, right? Not just genetics or whatever. You can chalk it up entirely to the tradition. That's fine. But uh, this, is, this is acknowledged, and specifically within Christianity, it's, it's very acknowledged. But individual Jews, if you're familiar with The Merchant of Venice, the play by William Shakespeare, the somewhat anti-Semitic play, very anti-Semitic play, where the Jew does get a few lines. Uh, he says, you know, does not a Jew laugh if you tickle him? Does not a Jew bleed if you prick him? Etc., etc. Uh, saying that, hey, at the end of the day, whatever differences you might regard us as, we are physical humans just like you. And this is the case for Jews as well. Because right now I need to share something from these words. I, I just understood what the verse meant in one sense. The Torah is understood in many senses. But when I read it to you a little bit earlier in the previous video, I didn't get it exactly right, quite probably. And this is pretty terrifying stuff. This is really terrifying stuff. Very, very, very terrifying stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, in the real world. In this world right now. Because I'm going to talk about Jews and non-Jews. And, and that's why I need to make this distinction very clear between the spiritual Jews and the literal physical Jews. The literal physical people, they are your brothers. They are your literal brothers. And I need to tell this to Jews too. This is what we're going to learn right now from, 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 from God's word as it's recorded here as God's word. Whatever one might take it as, that's what the Bible calls it. Uh, the Bible says quite literally that God put these precise words, told these words that Moshe should write them down. Parshas Hazinu. Uh, Deuteronomy, Dvarim, Lamed Beis, 32. Yeah, so, um, you know, some Jews who are very, very orthodox, not the average Jews or whatever else, but the really, really orthodox ones, they might not, as I myself certainly once did not, see non-Jews as being of the same thing as us at all. You know, uh, not in a tech. in other words, bodily, I always recognized I couldn't see much difference, right? Physically, we seem to be, you know, we have the same kinds of bodies and similar thoughts, whatever else. But a spiritual neshama concept, whatever it happens to be. It's actually through my recognition of, of, of people's bodily needs, uh, having visited uh, people in, in the French hospice in Jerusalem, right outside the old city of Jerusalem. I went there very often, and uh, there was an Arab guy. Normally, I'm supposed to hate Arabs, uh, but there was an Arab guy there, Suhil, and uh, I used to hold his hand and sing to him all the time. And it was through the recognition of, yeah, like on a deep human, right, this is who we are, empathy-wise, that I came to a, a better understanding of what we are as humans and what we are as Jews. And as Jews, yes, we are to some degree victims of a meme. You know the word meme, of course, from social media. 
It originally comes from a term that Dawkins created, if I understand correctly. Basically, the essentials of, of evolution are as follows. There are genes. If I have a brother and I'm a little taller and I'm a giraffe so I can get more fruit, then I can live longer, be healthier, get more mates, and therefore in 30 years, or however long giraffes take to gestate and grow up, the next generation, the next population of giraffes will be more like me than like my brother. That's genes. Memes is the equivalent of genes. It's certain things like whether it's a language, like English, which started off in a small little island and spread to the entire world or whether it's wearing ties, or whether it's a facial tick, or this expression like this. Whatever it is, whether the meme is big or small or a package of memes, um, the generations end up weeding them out. Every generation decides which one should have greater prominence in the next generation. That's how these things work. And the Jews carry a meme. All of humanity carries various memes. The Bible records memes that predate the Jews as well, not to mention there are other traditions elsewhere. But uh, the Jewish meme is a pretty big one. So, again, for, for Jews, first of all, are Jews really that afraid as they pretend to be? All four of my grandparents were in the Holocaust. All four of them. I found out as an adult that I had an aunt and uncle killed in the Holocaust. And I'm not that afraid. If people are really that afraid, they need to see a psychiatrist. So Jews, chill if you get nervous. Non-Jews, whatever. There's, there's a bunch of... I mean, I get I get comments every single day. I get comments from all... Today I got a bunch. Comments from all kinds of anti-Semites of the various brands. It's really only a couple of brands, but, you know, uh, really nasty, horrible, horrible stuff. So, I, I mean, I get what's out there. It's not like I have to care. I don't think you have to care either. Let's be practical people here. Um, so to Christians... I think, uh, you know, I, I, and this is uncomfortable for everybody. It's uncomfortable for me, by the way. It's uncomfortable for Jews. It's uncomfortable for Christians. Or at least let's, let's try to be jointly uncomfortable here. <laughs> or at least recognize that we are. This is, this is weird stuff because we are just human beings and we have a terrible tradition of, of fighting and killing each other all over, all over the world, of not understanding how we can communicate with each other properly. So, uh, so yeah, you know, we've, we've developed all kinds of defenses, all kinds of paranoias around each other. Okay. I get it. I'm I'm part I'm part of this. I'm part of the Dor E. K. Shupsaltal. I'm part of the the crooked and twisted generation. I'm part of that. Jews are, Christians are, all people are. Even the North Sentinelese, by the way, the most cut off tribe on earth. Well, it would distract us. Let's just say I know about all the things that are interesting to me. It's not all the interesting things in the world, but all the things interesting to me. I spent a life exploring. So, uh, humankind's inheritance is, is something, and humans and all different. It's beautiful. Anyways, so yeah, here's the verse. Here's the actual verse. What it really says. This here is a song that the Jews are supposed to memorize, and which basically says it's a song to all the world, to all of creation. That's what it is. It's a song to all of creation saying, uh, we are responsible. <laughs> it's our fault because we didn't figure everything out. God gave us this incredible tradition, this incredible history. And, uh, and here we are, this is our evidence before the world against ourselves, which we don't even know that we're carrying it. We don't even know we're carrying this parasite. I say that as a human now. Consider this a comedy section of my videos. Against God. I say it as a human. What the hell do you want from me? There was a joke. My... I don't want to cry. Um, but there was a joke from a friend of uh, my, my grandparents when they passed away at, uh, at the Shiva, which is a week of mourning in, in someone's home, where... Uh, so the middle-aged woman who is the daughter of these survivors, she said that her, that her father heard, uh, he heard one joke in Auschwitz. The only time he heard a joke in Auschwitz. It was Yontif, it was a holiday. Like I said, I'm just a human. All right, <clears throat> sorry, I'm gonna have to let all the timing and whatever else go by the wayside just to get the punchline out. Um, the Jews say in, in the holiday prayers, God, you chose us. It's a very essential aspect of, of, of many, many Jewish prayers, but it's a special holiday. Um, 
so the, the, the joke that this guy had heard. God, why don't you give them a little atavahatano? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I can't do it <clears throat> without crying if I say it properly. Um, you know, enough of this chosenness. What the actual fuck? Enough of this chosenness. Who, who needs this? As humans, who needs it? In the previous video, I spoke, I, I was criticizing my fellow brother, sister Jews for for relying on things like, like lawyers and disgusting things like that for, um, you know, for protecting themselves instead of, our, our, instead of at least partially our spiritual tradition. Sure, we have to have atom bombs as a backup. No question about it, 100%. I, I think I could not have been clearer about it. In my You Did Your Three Point Plan video, number three is kill everything that moves. I couldn't be clearer. But that's not the way. The way isn't just an iron wall. We have something to teach. So this is what we're testifying against us to all heaven and earth, according to the Bible right here. That God told Moses to tell the Jews to memorize and saying, I know you'll never forget it. And this is right now at least partially a fulfillment of that, of that, of that prophecy. Shiches doesn't mean really destruction. This is a verse, Dori Keshub Saltel verse. Shiches doesn't mean destruction, it means ruin, to ruin something. Shiches loy, lo. Very clever wordplay. Thank you, God. We appreciate the wordplay. This is what God gives us. He gives us wordplays, He gives us the pleasure of, of Torah. It's very buddhist -y in sending you into your head, except activating a different part of it. It's, as a human, I, I hold it against him. <laughs> Whatever that could possibly mean. Shiches lolo. The ruin is not his. <clears throat> in other words, world, when you observe that Jews are not perfect. Well, God wants you to know it ain't his fault. He told them what to do, and me has a responsibility, like all my brothers and sisters do, to uh, <clears throat> to try to do our best. <clears throat> Again, I don't know what he wants, though. We try to do our best, and we just get trolled by the world, either as, as by pieces of shit on the internet, nearly everything, or... Or by literally being put in gas chambers. They're like, oh, yeah, sure, you were good in a whole bunch of stuff, you know, sure. But, you know, uh, you really pissed us off with this. Or we imagined something, like the Jews torturing wafers to torture the Christ. Don't you get how no Jew thinks that the wafer is a person? Don't you get how nobody who's not a Christian could ever possibly think such a thing? It's a totally insane thing unless somebody's a Christian. Where do we find God turning into bread in the Old Testament? If you're a Christian, I know where Jesus says it in his, but where do you find in the Old Testament God turning into bread? Yes, there are positive references to bread and also negative references. Don't forget the word milchama is related to the word bread. Okay, I know my Torah a little bit, not, not, not what I could, but I know it a little bit. My point is we have to defend ourselves against every possible permutation of troll when we're just human. Well, that's the thing. God gave us this problem. We have to work it out between ourselves. I was in Tarragona, Spain, and I got to meet the Archbishop there. And uh, we had a very pleasant conversation. Very, we, I, I spent quite some time there in Tarragona, Spain, from which, of course, Jews were kicked out. So I'm not going to get sidetracked with telling you about modern Tarragona, Spain, and all the funny politics there that relate to that matter. But uh, but he said to me that the Pope said that the Jews are our older brothers. So, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't judge people. I don't care how someone else thinks about it. What, did he mean bad? Was he putting down Catholics? Was he being patronizing? Was it both? Leave that aside. 
That's so unimportant. I mean, he's a human just like you. He's, what do you want from other people? Which, for the record, I'm not going to get sidetracked into details, but it's what you always have all over the world. Whenever someone or something or some tradition actually is special, really is, not just fashionably is, but actually is, you'll have people, not intelligent people, doing it in intelligent ways for intelligent purposes, even if they are wrong, but unintelligent people finding some fault in it, which is, of course, or even their perception of a fault, and therefore downgrading it for all of humanity. That applies, by the way, anytime you see something that's debunked, some dude was debunked, some, I mean, old dude from previous times. Okay, that means that either you can take seriously the people who, the people who throw words onto, professionally, their whole life, all they do is throw words into the computer to send it out and see how it, gets, how it goes and if it can get them paid the next day. Right? You're willing to trust them over generations worth of pre-debunking. In other words, at least give it a go. At least give the old stuff a go. So God says, Shiches lo lo. The ruin is not from him. Banav mumam. His children are blemished. Yeah, we're physical. He cut off part of our dicks. We're physical. We're blemished. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe Portnoy's complaint explains everything. That's a reference for literatis, if, any, if anybody did get it. Um, yeah. Banav mumam. Dor ike shupsaltal. A crooked or perverted, stubbornly, ike sh, uh, implies uh, stubbornness, upsaltal and twisted. Twisted is different from stubborn. Twisted is literally related to the word to a wick. That's 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 what this word is. Petal. You take a wick, you twist it. So uh, it's a generation, I guess, that has um, both, you know, stubborn crookednesses that they're confident in, that they've held on to since forever, that they think are right, or you know, but also new twisters. There's, there's old stuff and there's new stuff. <laughs> old stuff and there's new stuff. God bless us. This is kind of our punishment for being the first people to step out of the Stone Age. Because at the end of the day, Adam was where humans are supposed to be. We ate a little bit too much from the Tree of Knowledge. This is not a secret. <laughs> Whew. But again, individual humans, and I need to clarify this. <clears throat> I will happily gladly do a video with the world's most studious anti-Semite. And I don't know if you know, but there's literally hundreds of thousands of them. There are literally at least hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, young men, of course, mostly, and older men, um, and some women, who their number one obsession in life, literally their number one obsession is Jews. Now, I need an audience. I'm not doing this for free. And I, I'm not taking money on this either. That would be no. Um, but, uh, but yeah, someone's got a big audience. And they want to have a conversation for both of our things, for mine and for theirs. Happy to. My point of view is that on most metrics, in most domains, as judged as human beings, Jews are... The same as, and sometimes a little better, than the people in their vicinity. The people in their time and place. Really. Really. So if you're judging humans, which is all that people do, we are so human that I can't... I don't know how to get through to people... One-on-one, -on -one, it's easy to do, We all, because we all know the truth deep down. And when you see that I'm not... Well, this is one-on-one. -on -one. There are no gotchas here. This is just me saying what I think. We're, we act like animals. We act like animals. Jews carry the secret to world peace. What an ugly term, world peace. It sounds so dull. <laughs> it won't be dull. 
Uh, we carry the secret to world peace. I'm sorry to say, I don't. Now, as humans, we have no right to be that arrogant for it, and that's really what we get beat up for: the arrogance. It's not really arrogance. It's mostly a nervous smirk. You'll see me doing it all the time. It's a nervous smirk. Intellectually, am I arrogant? Am I explaining? Th From my perspective, my view is not one that prejudices me. It's not one that prejudices my tribe. It truly is not. On a human level, it is not. And on a spiritual level, it certainly is not. On a spiritual level... There is something to this older brother thing for all of Western humanity. I've never yet been to the East, unfortunately. I think it's essential that I go soon. Um, really is, I think. But for all of and but at the end of the day, the Jewish monotheistic tradition and the, the Bible it's permeated every every last corner of the globe. It's it's had its effect. It's made its mark in every way in every last corner of the globe. And some Jews do have some understanding, or at least the words, to be able to share some things. So, Shiches Lo Lo, the ruin is not from him. Bon of Mumam, his children are imperfect. That's really the word, not blemished. Imperfect! Thank you, God. You're awesome. Dor See, I'm thanking him for, for the enjoyment of Talmud Torah, for the enjoyment of studying Torah. It's a Jewish sickness. Pity us, please. Shiches lo lo, the ruin isn't his. Bon of Mumam, his children are imperfect. Dor ik shubsaltol, a stubborn and and twisted generation. Ha le yudhe vavhe, the ineffable name of God that I discuss in many many videos. <clears throat> For now, I'll say Hashem, meaning the name. Ha la Hashem tigmaluzos. You're going to blame this on yud heh vav -Hey? The guy of the Bible? The guy who chose the Jews? Don't throw away the, the bathwater just because you're throwing away the baby. I, for the record, Jesus didn't come for the Goyim. He came for the Jews. We're the ones who need a nice God to die as a Jew. We're the ones who needed it. The fact that we didn't take him for a number of reasons, mainly because it, it, because, sorry to say this in just three seconds when it's many hours worth of explanation, but because Paul, in I'm not saying that his point of view was wrong in his day, I think that he meant well and he tried his best, but because of what he did and spreading our religion to the world in a certain sense, cut off from its roots, because of that, um, the religion quickly changed into something very foreign to Jews. Plus, a lot of Jesus stuff was a little bit too idealistic. You can't really get rid of the law. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe piecemeal. I get he had to try because those were end of days. We're also end of days. <laughs> okay? And here I am, piecemeal, spending many, many hours explaining as much as I can and asking to be judged on it intelligently, not judge negatively, and not ju not don't judge my person. Let's approach this as egoless as we can. Um, so, he's telling the world, Hal HaShem you're going to blame this on, y on Yahweh? Am novo v'loi chacham. You foolish nation and not intelligent. Earlier in Deuteronomy, God it gets very, uh, very... See, that's why Jews don't really care for being told how intelligent they are. I mean, as a race, or whatever you'll call it. Sure, among ourselves, we kind of get a kick out of it, obviously. We're human. What do you want from us? You know, but we don't really dig it, because like, once you start noticing stuff, we're not sure where it's going to end. Well, so long as I'm alive, and so long as people give me a voice, it won't end badly. As far, that's what I'm saying as me. If I'm protected, because I'm just a human, you have to distinguish what I'm saying from my physical nature, which has all the flaws that humans have. And therefore all the needs that humans have. Something which has been denied this individual. It has been denied this individual by society, by no right whatsoever, by no moral right whatsoever. 
So, whether it's the Jews in total, whether it's any individual, this is a story. So, uh, earlier in Deuteronomy, God gets very complimentary to the Jews. He says, oh, you're so smart. I'm Chacham V'Novo. And I go, everyone's going to say, ooh, look at this really smart and, and, and analytical people. I'm Chacham V'Novo. And I go, Gadol Azeh. Ki mi goi Gadol, asher lo yelin krev melav. Just over and over, God saying, you're such a smart people. You're so smart. Although, God does say, it's your Torah that's smart. It's what I'm giving you that's smart. It's your book that's smart. But if you're going to look up Am Chacham V'Navoin, that expression, in all of Jewish literature, um, including modern day Israel and through forever, you'll probably almost entirely find it referencing us as a people, probably with some humor because we're funny, okay? <laughs> you know, we don't take ourselves so seriously, so don't take us so seriously, please. We're humans. Again, um, you know, you'll probably find it in a sort of like, you know, referring sarcastically often or or whatever it is to Jews in cup, Yiddish cup. It's not what the Torah says. I would prefer the Torah says that because, again, I'm, I come from the Holocaust. I'm straight out of the ashes. And I'm like, yo, Lord, what the? But I got to say what I got to say. Um... <clears throat> God says, Hello, who avicha? Isn't he your father? Everyone knows that you're, that he's your father. Everyone knows that. Today's Christians know that when Jesus referred to his father, most Christians today know, that he was saying what Jews always say, Avinu Malkenu, our father, our king. They were saying it in Jesus' day. Jesus' point was, you guys who are not living in accordance with what is right, which for the most part, well, I don't want to get into Christian theology right now, but for the most part, he was right, of course. Any Jew any Jew in the world who knows Torah can look into Jesus' writings, into the things recorded in Matthew or whatever, and you'll see uh, it's nearly all from Yeshaya or Chazal. It's the same stuff, not even from Chazal. Chazal I'm saying it's not the Chazal is the rabbis of the Talmud. It's not what the you know the the the, the Greco Roman world, then the Vandals and the Aryans and all the other peoples. It's not what they imagined it to be, my friends. I get that we're upset, but as you recognize, we need to talk to them as humans, and together we can figure lots of different things out on a spiritual, intellectual, empathetic level. So halahu avicha, isn't he your father? Everyone knows he's your father. Bani b'chori Israel. My firstborn son is Israel. That's what Jesus was saying. Like, you know, of course, the Jews are saying, you know, we are from, from, from Abraham. He says, no, you descend, you've come from vipers. So there's some crazy fucking anti-Semites who would say, like, oh, Jews really descend from, like, some kind of demonic or whatever the hell. Retards. We don't need to take them into Cheshben, Baruch Hashem. Thank God they're not, not around today really much. Yeah, they're loud. We have to reach out to these people, too. Of course we have to reach out to them. People don't get loud and angry against those that they perceive to be their oppressors, rightly or wrongly, almost entirely wrongly. But regardless, they don't lash out if everything's going great in their life. There are very few evil people like Henry Ford. You know, who, Henry Ford is given so much credit for uh, supposedly, he said, uh, I want people to get paid well enough that they can all afford a Ford vehicle. He created the assembly line. He took the human spirit out of manufacture. Before that, it was you make a car. You produce the car. This was a car that you made. Now you're just taking the place of a robot. You're just a slave until they can invent a robot to do it. Notorious anti-Semite and horrible human being. But nearly all of the people who will read Henry Ford and quote Henry Ford on the internet, they're unhappy, usually for some legitimate reason, not being heard. Sorry to say such a terrible thing. I think it's true. So, halahu avicha, he is your father. And, and, and finish Jesus' thing. Yeah, that's what he's saying. I, I'm, I'm the son of God because I'm, I'm actually the one who's, I have that relationship. Again, among his people, let's not get, you know, historically speaking, how important really was he? How many other messiahs were going around with similar stuff? I teach history. We can discuss this. Um, but it's not that important for right now. Konecha, he's your owner. Everyone knows. Huasecha, he's the one who made you, you know. The Bible, we gave the world the Bible. V'yechonu he's the one who set you straight. 
We are still here many thousands of years later after everyone predicted we'd be gone. Do you know the first mention of the word Israel? The very first mention of the word Israel in all of recorded human history that we have dug up so far? In other words, what we're supposed to know as of this moment that I talk to you? The Merinab Tastili. From the 14th century before Jesus. 1400 years. You know what it says? Israel is no more. Her seed is wiped out. Israel is more. 3,350 years later. This is worth acknowledging. People don't because they think it's going to either go to Hitler or maybe Jewish supremacy. Halavai. I'm kidding. Halavai means, I, I, if only, ochala. I wish. Of course that would be terrible. Of course I'm opposed to that. Watch my previous video. I'm very, this is opposed to that. We should be treated well as you should treat your priests. But we have to be proper priests too. Proper priests doesn't mean that we have to be perfect vis-a-vis -vis you as humans. It doesn't mean that. We should be a little better. And we are a little better. We should probably be even a little bit better than a little bit better. Probably. Including me. Most definitely me. Of course. Fine. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe, you know. But but not that much. Mean As priests means engage. Engage. What's real? What's not real? Let's talk it out. For real. Honestly. Truthfully. Like my Rosh Hashiva of Noah Weinberg used to always say. Let's make a cheshman. Let's, let's, let's talk it out. Okay, there's a lot more to say. But this is for now. May we be blessed.